Hello and welcome to the Craftsman Show. My name is your host, the Craftsman. I hope you're doing good today. In this video, I want to talk to y'all about how that you can silver solder. I had recently started making a little character out of metal pieces. This could be old keys or nails or anything that's made out of uh, metal. And this technique I'm going to show you can be used not only with steel, but can be used with copper and brass as well as some other types of metal. To do this, you're gonna need a few key ingredients. First, you're gonna need the solder. Then, you're gonna need a flux. And lastly, you're gonna need a torch. You can use propane, but I prefer to use a uh, map gas, but propane works good too. It might just take a little longer. Some additional things you might want is a fire brick, a soldering pick, with a titanium tip on it, a couple of helping hands, clamps, a wire brush, and some pliers. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I might go about making a little character. This is a vintage steel key that I had got at an antique store, and a couple of cut nails, antique box, box cut square nails. I'm gonna pretend like these gonna be the legs for the character. Before soldering, you wanna prep your pieces. As you can see, this got a little bit of rust to it. But I'm gonna sand off the areas that I'm gonna be joining. And you wanna get it nice and clean. So I just take some sandpaper and get a scrape of scrape in. And then I take the legs and I do the same thing. You want to try to get down to the uh, bare, to the shiny metal if you can. The cleaner it is, the better the uh, joint can be. All right, I'm gonna take my stay sieve, which is my flux. And I'm going to apply it wherever the joint gonna be. So I put me a little bit on the key at the bottom. And then I'm gonna put me a little bit as well on the nails, which are gonna become the legs for the character. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my silver solder and I'm gonna cut me off just the pieces that I need. I prefer to do it this way because I tend to use the less solder if I go ahead and prepare the exact piece that I'm gonna use. And you can see it's a tiny little piece. And then I cut me another one. And I don't know how well that you can see this, but I'm showing you just how very little is required to do these kind of joints. Now I'm gonna take me a little brush and apply just a little bit of flux to my silver solder. So you're gonna be put flux on the pieces, the metal that you're joining, and you also put it on the silver solder itself. Now this is the part where it gets maybe a little bit tedious. You want to set up your work to where it's going to stay in place while you are torching and joining it. All right. So take your time on this part and get everything set up nice and good just like you like it. In this case my little key man going to be uh, sitting down so I just want to go ahead and get him fixed up as close to that as possible. Now you want to go ahead and set your your silver solder right on the joint where it's supposed to go. Again, take your time with this part. Patience is going to be key right here. Once you get everything set up just about like you like it, now it's time to apply the heat. I turn my torch on and I dial it back just a little bit. Whenever you do this, the key thing to do is to apply the heat broadly. And I mean, don't just hit the area where the uh, joint and the solder is, but you're gonna try to heat up the whole piece and you wanna try to heat up both, all the pieces as evenly as possible. The heat is gonna pull the solder one way or the other. So the best way you can do it is to kinda get the heat going all over and heat everything up. And as you can see, I'm using my titanium solder pick to make sure the uh, little solder don't get pushed out by the flame. I keep it up in that joint much as I can. The solder is going to wick through the cracks wherever the joint is so you want your joint but it close close together as you can do it. You keep applying the heat and eventually your silver is going to heat up and melt and then it's going to flow right on into the joint. And then you got a joint piece. Let it cool. Do not put it in water or quench it like you might do with other metal projects. 
You want to let it sit and cool on its own. And that's going to make it good and strong. And here go the joint. I will say with the silver soda that I use, the 56%, it makes an extremely tough joint. I'm squeezing this right now, and it ain't brittle. It's got flex to it. I really like this product. Now the piece is real crusty and got flux on it and, and oxidation. So what we're going to do is put it in a pickle. And I put my pickle in a crock pot and turn it on and let it warm up. Hold up, crafts man. Talk about a pickle. I use a very simple pickle recipe. It's just one cup of vinegar per one tablespoon of salt. Once you remove it from the pickle, the little rusty, crusty little things, this should remove pretty easy. You can hit it with a wire brush. I like to also take me a little sandpaper if I want to get it a little shinier. Or if you got somewhere you need to be, you can hit it with the wire brush on the drill. This is probably one of my favorite techniques. And you can buff it as shiny as you would like to. Craftsman like to leave a little bit of uh, patina, a little bit of rust, and some age in his pieces. I don't really like to make them too very shiny, but uh, y'all don't hold that against me. And this is how it looks. And there we go. We're going to put him on the shelf and just let him hang out for a little bit. I'd like to show you another example. In this case, I'm going to take a washer and I'm going to join it to a, a nail that I have cut the tip off of to make it kind of flat. Again, make sure you put the flux wherever the joint's going to be. This will help the silver solder to flow into those areas. And then we're going to cut us a little piece of silver solder and apply the flux to it. And I'm going to go ahead and place it right here where it's going to go. I'm going to get my helping hands and set up my piece, get everything in place, and then fire up the torch. Now in this example, I want to show you what I was talking about earlier about how you need to apply the heat broadly all over both pieces. In this example, I heat up the nail a little bit more than I heat up the washer. And you can see what will happen. Gradually, the nail becomes hotter than the washer. And you don't want to let either of your pieces get to a bright orange. You want them to get to just maybe a dull red, if that. And what, can, what you can see happens, the silver soda flows up to the nail and not so much to the washer. But what, So what do we do? What you can do in that case is back off of the nail a little bit and heat the washer more. And what this will do is help pull the silver back down to the washer. Remember, the silver pulls wherever the heat is. Or like they say, where the heat go, the silver flow. I want to show you just how strong a silver solder joint is. Look at this. I straight up bend this piece and the joint did not break. It's not brittle. It holds together and let me bend that nail. Y'all, that's a strong joint. And that's why I use 56% silver solder. Here's some things I did. Look at the motorcycle. It's fun to make things out of metal. I find parts all the time in flea markets, antique stores. Look, here go a little bit of motorcycle I had made. And here goes a parent and a child I made out of some old skeleton keys and some cut nails. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is a pendant I made to demonstrate that you can join stainless steel, copper, and brass. And this is a robot I made out of old speaker box, a metal tin speaker, sewing machine parts for the hands, some cut nails, a washer. You can make all kind of stuff with silver solder. I just want to say thank y'all so much for keeping on watching my videos, for subscribing, for leaving me comments that have been so encouraging. 
one of y'all had suggested that I get connected with Amazon uh, so when I put my links to products that they give me a little kickback for it and that's helped me out and uh, some of the things that I show y'all in this video are available on my Etsy site I'll put a link down in the description I hope this inspired y'all I hope that you learned something and I hope maybe that this will help you to keep on steady craft